Asher Wolfmuller here, and Daniel. I was why I couldn't believe this. I saw this video from my friend, Pastor Sean Dunzer, who's the chaplain of the Lutheran Church Missouri Center, the International Center, and he gets on the video just mean and rough and like in your face. I got a challenge for you. And I said, I'm gonna so I'm gonna show Daniel. I can't believe he's got this Viking beard and he's. Oh, he's so so what? Watch, Dan, and I, I just I want to watch this video here. Hi, I'm Chaplain Sean Denzer, Director of Worship for the Lutheran Church. Take it easy, Pastor Denzer. So Settle it down. Now, now he's gonna get, he's gonna be like, take by the cut, and he's like, I'm gonna challenge, challenge you. Watch this. Watch this, Dan. Here it is. And that is to learn a psalm by heart. <laughs> Now, there are so many great psalms to choose from, but the one I Look think at his beard quivering. Psalm 91. Psalm 91 was the psalm that the devil tried to... The Psalm 91 Jesus, so we challenge. Look, by the end of this video, he is just but off also, his head yelling at us. Watch was... this, watch this. And the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver Take him. it easy, Pastor Denzer, but me and, me and Daniel, we accept name. your Psalm 91 challenge, right? Yes. We accept. All right. So we, the, the idea is to memorize Psalm 91, but to do that, for me, I just can't. That's hard for me anyways. I don't know if Daniel inherited it from me. Just to like press a text into my head through rote effort. Urgh. So here is the two things that I need to happen for me to memorize the text. I'm trying to make it focus, not covering that. It has, I have to understand what it means, number one, and it, I have to love it. So we're gonna study the text so that we understand Psalm 91 and so that we love Psalm 91. Ready? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Hey Daniel, here we go. Here's Psalm 91 for the Psalm 91 challenge. Here's the question. Did we do this already? How to read the Psalms? Mm -hmm. All right. Before we get started, here's the three questions that we want to ask when it comes to reading the Psalms. Now, this is because I'm not very good at reading poetry, right? So, all right, how about a pen? Blue. So, we want to ask three questions uh, when we are reading the Psalms. Number one, the question is, who is talking to whom? And this means we're paying special attention to the pronouns, okay? So, we'll use that for blue. Next color. Red, what is the picture or what is the image that's being presented to us? Uh, and it's going to change throughout the psalm. But we want to say, what's the picture language that's being, that's being preached to us? And next, the third question is, what is the structure of the psalm? Is there a verse that comes up over and over again? Is there a refrain or something like that? Okay, so those are our three questions. So let's put that over there. And here is the psalm. Now, I want to start with green first, the structure question on this one, because when you're memorizing, it's good to kind of look things through. And the main thing for the structure in this one is that we just want to notice that there's 16 verses. Okay? Mm -hmm. Do you want? Do you know how long the average psalm is? You want to guess? Mm -hmm. How many verses do you think? 30. 30? That's a good guess. You guys are playing along at home. The answer is 11. The average length of a psalm is like... 11.2 verses. So this is a short, this is a longer than usual psalm, but not by, but not by too much. So we have 16 verses, um, and that's basically the main thing with the structure. So we kind of have an, a sense for how long we have to go. Okay, so the next question is, we want to ask, Blue please, who is talking to whom? And this is a very, who, this is very complicated in this psalm, actually, in fact. So we want to look at the pronouns, okay? And so what are the options for who's talking to whom? We can have, so for example, say it's a Christian talking to God, and what do we call that? Prayer. Or maybe it's, maybe it's, a, maybe it's a Christian talking to another Christian, and, that's, and that would be like a sermon. Or maybe it's the... Christian talking to the world, or maybe it's God talking to the Christian. That's God's word. That's like a that's prophecy, or or maybe there's these oops that's a four. There's these great uh, psalms where it's God talking to God, where it's God the Father talking to the Son, 
you are my son, I've begotten you, or it's God the Son talking to the Father, why have you forsaken me? So, so there's all these who's talking to who's. But this one is going to change, and it's going to be very complicated, because there's, there's going to be a couple of changes. So let's just take a look here. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So is it talking to God or about God? Mm. Now here we're going to see later, it's going to be, it's going to say you. So would, that would be talking to someone. But here's when it says he and thee. This is someone talking about God. So he who dwells in the shadow of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So this is a Christian talking to a Christian. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a Christian. In fact, it's just a, it's a preaching that's happening here. Uh, about God. and But then look at what happens. The sermon changes and it says, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So he's preaching about God and then he says what he's going to pray. So it, it switches there. It says, this is what I'm going to say to God when I pray. And then look at, it switches here from talking about God to then preaching to the Christian. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and he under the wing and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not feel the t- terror of the night, nor the error that flies by day, nor the pestilence stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. So there's a big you sermon that's here, preaching to the Christian, and it continues. A thousand will fall at your side, 10,000 by your right hand, but they will not come near you. You will look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge also. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, for he will command his angels concerning you, guard you and all your ways on their hand. They will bear you up, lest your foot strike against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent. You will trample underfoot. So this is a big, long you sermon. One Christian to another. Now, one of the great mysteries, and Pastor Denzer, this is kind of nice. Pastor Denzer sorts out that this you first refers to Jesus. And then, by extension, to the Christian with faith. And then, okay, and then he says this, but it's going to change right here. It says, because he holds fast to me in love. Now, the big question we have to ask is, who is this me? Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. So who do you think this is? I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, my name, when he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in time of trouble. I will rescue him and, and, uh, and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So the question is, who is the me and the I in this last part? Who do you think? The me is God. Right. So now this is God. So all of the whole time, it's been the Christian preaching, but now God is talking to us. So it switches here in verse 14 to 16, these last three verses, and it's it's a direct prophecy of God talking right to the Christian. Do you see how that changes? That's an amazing thing to see, how who's talking to who switches throughout the whole psalm. So, so here we can say this is uh, this first part, this introductory part, is talking about God, and then highlight with green, highlight with red, highlight with pink, highlight with green. And then the long middle part, all the way through verses 3, all the way down to verse 13, that is the sermon part of the text, the for you part. And then the last part is, the last three verses, is God talking directly to us, to the Christian. See the structure? There's the who's talking to who there? Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, questions so far? Okay, red marker. Now, now we get to the we get to the meat of it. And because we want to ask the question, what's the picture? What picture languages are being are being used here? So let's just go through and highlight a couple of them and see what happens. This is an amazing thing. Look at this. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So this is going to pick up this theme of, of refuge, of safety, of castle and, and fortress. 
But but the key word here is going to be the shadow, because look at how that is going to be extended. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. You know what a fowler is? Someone who hunts birds. So a snare is like a, a little trap that they would use to catch the birds. Okay, and look at this. And he will cover you with his pinions. The, the pinion is a wing. And under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. So, so now this, this is the main verse, three and four, is going to give us the main picture. And who am I, if, I, if, he's gonna, if I'm going to be delivered from a bird trapper, then what am I in the psalm? I'm a bird. <laughs> in other words, this psalm wants us to imagine that we're birds being hunted. You see that? And so we're little baby birds, and the fowler, the guy is out to get us, and he's out to try to grab a hold of us. And yet Jesus, he said, God is the big mama bird that's going to hide us under, under its wings. And so that we're little baby birds, but we're, we're in the shadow, we're in the safety of our mom's wings. There's this thing like we're little, or like chickens. If you're a chicken and you're running around just eating worms or whatever it is that chickens eat, and the hawk flies over, all the chickens run and hide, and the mama chicken sits on them. And that's the picture, is that the Lord is like the mama chicken who sits on us and protects us. And look at this. You will not fear the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day. So the hunter who's after you is shooting bow and arrow at you, and yet you're not afraid. The pestilence that stalks in darkness, the destruction that wastes in noonday. So there's some soldier imagery kind of mixing in, um, especially here. Uh, and, and that takes on right here. Because now, not only are we little birds, but we're also soldiers that are in a war, because look at it, it says, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense with the wicked. So even though you're at war, you're safe. This is fantastic. Because you have made the most high your dwelling place. The, uh, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the most high who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague will come near your tent. And now watch what happens here. So, okay, so tent, let me just make sure we get this. So we have the word refuge there. That's going to be here. Uh, fortress. Was was fortress somewhere else? Did you see it? Fortress. Is there another fortress? Uh, dwelling place. Anyway, so maybe fortress and dwelling place are going to be connected to each other. Uh, shelter. Was there another shelter here? We'll see if we can... So, okay, so we're in this, we're in the Lord's tent. Uh, we're in, the Lord is covering us like this. So the idea of a bird being safe and protected by its mom and the idea of a soldier being safe there. But then look at this as an amazing thing. For he will, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Now, it turns out that the angels that were the the wings that were protecting us these little things we're little ba baby birds but we also have the holy angels and their wings are also wrapped around us protecting us on their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against the stone now an important text let's see i need another color what do you think green dark green how about dark green another thing for us to consider is that this these two verses right here 11 and 12 are the verses that the devil quoted to Jesus from the top of the temple. So remember when Jesus was being tempted mm -hmm. on the top of the temple? And he said, throw yourself off, because it's written, he will command his angels concerning you. Uh, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And then Jesus responded and said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now we say, well, how is it that the devil quoted the scripture? But the main thing that we need to see is that when the devil quoted it, he actually left this little phrase out to guard you in all your ways. So the devil said, he will command his angels concerning you on their hands. They will bear you up. But he forgot to guard you in all your ways. And this is the reminder is that the Lord has given us his promise according to our calling. So the Lord gives us promises according to vocation. And Jesus didn't have the vocation of jumping off the temple. He had the vocation of being the savior. So we don't want to tempt the Lord by trying to apply his promises to us outside of our calling. 
you will tread on the lion, adder, young lion, and serpent you will trample underfoot. So can you imagine? We're just these little baby birds. Look like this. Cheep, cheep. Is this what a baby bird looks like? Do you want to try to draw a baby bird? Okay, you draw a baby bird. And this little baby bird, and what's this little baby bird doing? It's trampling on a lion. Rawr. That's what a lion looks like. All right. Because he, oh, let's see your bird. Look, you guys are going to always want Daniel to draw instead of me. Quit showing off. Uh, yeah, I see it. All right, all right. There you go. Because he holds fast to me in the... Okay, and then it switches. So it says hiding and all this. And now it's holding fast to me in love. I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and I will honor him with long life. I will satisfy him. I will show him my salvation. So it ends with finally the little bird that's being protected. The Lord just lavishing us with promises. One, that he'll deliver. Two, that he'll protect. Three, that he will answer. Four, that he will be with us in trouble. Five, that he will rescue. Six, that he will honor. Seven, that he will satisfy us with life and with long life. And eight, that he will show us his salvation. And these are the promises then that the psalm culminates with that we can take to the bank. So there, so that's the picture of the psalm is a bird being hunted, but finding safety under the wings of the mama bird. Got it? Any questions? Okay. Here it is. The Psalm 91 challenge. Look at Daniel's little bird that he threw there. Now your homework is you get to do this yourself. Look, here's a blank one. So there you go. Thanks, Pastor Denzer. I mean, next time, not so rough. But we got this. Uh, thanks for issuing the Psalm 91 challenge. And me and Daniel are going to work on it, huh? Mm -hmm. See if we can memorize this whole thing.